way. Um, so this is the last, obviously, message in our Advent teaching series. And for those of you who might be unfamiliar with the word Advent, it simply means coming. It comes out of, it's a Latin word that means coming. But even more than just coming, it's an expectant coming. It's you know it's going to happen. And uh, for the wise men, when they travel, we looked at the Old Testament um, prophecies of a star that was going to point to Jesus, a new king, a new kingdom, a new era, a new way of world order. Jesus would be the light of the world while the star in the sky pointed to that light. That was the Old Testament prophecy. When the wise men got to Bethlehem, obviously they encountered the New Testament fulfillment of Jesus being born. And uh, when Jesus was born, it was a gift. We talked about the gifts of, that he brought, the gift of hope, the gift of love, the gift of joy, and the gift of peace for all mankind. What was hope? Hope was for the doubting and the fearful, wasn't it? The world was a dark place. I mean, think about it. The time between the Testaments, there was 400 years when they didn't hear from God. There was no signs or, or messages from the prophets. I mean, you, had, you look at the Old Testament, you have all these prophets, right? The Old Testament prophets that delivered these messages. And then for 400 years, there's silence. I think the people probably thought, God's abandoned us. None of this is ever going to happen. Silence for 400 years. There was a promise, but then with the light there came hope, right? And then there was the gift of love, perhaps when the world least expected the gift of love. When you think about Israel and not only how they had wandered, but how they blatantly disobeyed God and worshipped idols and evil practices and the corruption that they had, and God stepped in in an unexpected and perhaps undeserving way and loved them by sending Jesus into the world. When they least expected or deserved it, he sent love. And then there's the gift of joy. And that was the scene of Jesus' birth. A troubled time for Mary and Joseph. Probably very confused. Mary may have been disappointed. This is not the way I wanted to become pregnant or not what I wanted my pregnancy someday to look like. And yet an angel appears and says, I bring you good news of great joy. That won't just be for you, Mary and Joseph, but for all people, okay? For all of us. And I shared how joy is a position, it's a state of delight, right? Some of you know that song, I have a joy, 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 joy down in my heart, right? It comes from the heart. Joy is a position. And then last week we looked at the gift of peace. And how we read and it said Jesus was the Prince of Peace, but I'm going to tell you Jesus is also the source of peace. And the statement I made that Peace isn't the absence of problems, but it's the presence of Jesus in the midst of all of our problems. There's a lot of problems, but we can still experience peace. And then I shared how Jesus at Christmas is proof that God is faithful to his promises. And again, I remind us that peace isn't found in things in this world, but peace is found in a permanent position, in a permanent relationship with the person of Christ. Those are the gifts to all mankind. The four gifts that came with Christmas, right? And you have to receive them, right? But this morning I want us to think about when we receive a gift. When you receive a gift, what do you do with it? What do you do when you receive a gift? What do you do with six gifts besides clean up after yourself? That's a gift, a bottle of water. You're welcome. I don't have enough for everybody, so. And I'm, not, I'm just randomly. I'll give that one over here. <laughs> I won't throw it at you. So you get a gift, right? What do you do with it? You might say thank you. Now imagine that it's looking over. But don't open it. What's in it is for what? To be used, maybe to be shared, maybe to enjoy. But what if you never opened it? What if you have a gift and you've been given that gift and you never open it? What if you receive a package at Christmas or a present at Christmas and you just keep it like that and you never open it? You just keep it for yourself. Maybe you enjoy looking at it, but you really don't get any benefit from it, nor does anybody else get any benefit from it. 
It just sits there. It doesn't do any good, does it? What if the gifts of Christmas that were given to us, we just take them and we just say, well, this is nice. Joy, hope, peace, and love. And we don't unwrap them. And we don't embrace them. It's like that bottle of water with its contents, but we never really unpack it and fully embrace it and enjoy what it's for. Wouldn't that be a tragedy? But what if something as simple as, and I'm just using water as as an analogy, but what if that gift was given so that maybe not only you might enjoy it, but that you might bless others with it? What if that water or that gift would bless other people when you start sharing it? Now stick with me on this, and it's kind of a Maybe a crazy analogy, but I think it works. Isn't that what Christmas is like? Jesus is sometimes referred to as living water. Huh? And water nourishes things to grow, and when those things grow, other things grow because other things feed off of it. I could unpack this over several weeks of messages. I'm not going to do that. But what I want us to understand this morning is that the gifts of Christmas weren't just for us. The gifts of joy, peace, love, hope weren't just for us. Oh, they're given to us. But the reality is that when we embrace them, when we open them up and we receive them, we have a responsibility to let those gifts flow to us through others, don't we? We have a responsibility to share those gifts with others because doesn't the world need more love, joy, hope, and peace? And if we've been given the gift to share, I think one of the best gifts that we can give at Christmas, like I was saying to the kids, is not so much what we get. This morning I'm going to kind of turn the tables, if you will. For the last four weeks we've looked at the gifts that have been given us. This morning I want to look at it and say, the best thing we can give at Christmas is to give those gifts to the people around us. Not just to embrace them ourselves, but to unpack them and give them to the people around us. So what does that look like? I want to give you some practical ways this morning, and I hope that maybe you grab the little note sheet, because I'm going to just give you some simple things that I'm hoping you'll do this week and try to live some of these things out. Just some practical tips for everyday living, how we can share those gifts with other people. What does that look like? The first one is the gift of hope. Listen to this. 1 Peter 1, verse 3 and 4 says, Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In His great mercy He has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that can never perish, spoil, or fade. How do you and I bring hope to someone else in a world that needs lots of hope? Look around. Consider who is it that you can encourage? Who is it that needs encouragement around you this Christmas? Who is lonely? You know, Josh mentioned before how we're meant to be in community. We're meant to be with other people. I can tell you there's a lot of lonely people in this world. Oh, they're not alone, but they're lonely because nobody understands their story. Nobody necessarily knows what they're going through because nobody's maybe listened to them or taken the time to sit and listen to them. You know, one of the things that broke my heart this past week was young lives. There was a young girl, and after she, after the um, meeting, um, she started telling her story to me, and I don't know why. And the, the whole night kind of came to a quick end. But it's like, I don't understand what it's like for this young girl at 16 years old or whatever to have this baby. But when she started telling me her story and I learned of her story, I thought, somebody needs to step in. That's what Young Lives is about. Stepping in and making a difference. And this is just one person, but I think when we stop to just listen sometimes, we begin to realize the loneliness that some folks have, the difficulties and struggles. Who's lonely around you? Who's alone? Who's lost a loved one? Who's hurting? Bring them hope. Who's dealing with a difficult situation? Well, how do you bring hope to somebody like that, right? Sometimes it's as simple as, and I'm just giving you some key words to write down, show up. Just show up. 
I think sometimes we make a huge difference when we just show up. We don't have to say anything. I would say the best sermon preached is one without words. Right? Just simply show up and do something. A random act of kindness. We talk about random acts of kindness, right? That's good, but maybe we need to do intentional acts of kindness. Not just random, but intentional acts of kindness. Maybe the next thing is step up. How do you bring hope? Step up. Maybe we need to sacrifice. Give up something that we want so someone can have more of what they need. Give up some of our own comforts at Christmas. The third one is keep up. Keep up with it. So often what happens is we step in and we show up for a little bit and then we back off, don't we? Keep up. Stay invested. When you hear of something, stay invested in that person's life. Check in with them. Walk with them. Friends walk in when the world walks out. And then pray up is the last one. Pray up. Pray them up. It always amazes me. One of the things I I try to do, and many of you know this, when you call me and you share something, I go, let's pray for a few minutes. Let's just pray on the phone for a few minutes. And then it's so awesome a day or two later to get a call or a text and saying, wow, that prayer was answered. Got it. If all it takes is pray for someone, <laughs> let's pray for people, right? And I'm always amazed at how many people say, you know what, no one's ever prayed for me. Maybe one of the best gifts you can give somebody this Christmas to encourage them or to give them hope is to pray for them this year. Pray for them. Pray for their person or situation. The second one, how do the gift of love? John 1, or actually 1 John 4, verse 9 through 12 says this, This is how God showed his love among us. He sent his one and only Son into the world that we might live through him. Right? John mentions that in John 3, 16, again in 1 John. And then it says, this is love. Not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his Son as an atoning sacrifice for us. Now, listen to the verse that comes right after this. It says, dear friends, since God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. We could unpack that for a while here too, but it says no one's ever seen God, but if we love one another, God lives in us and his love is made complete in us. What he's saying is because God did all of this for us, he says, since then, we need to love one another. Well, how do you give the gift of love to others at Christmas, right? Let me give you a short list here. Love without limits. That's tough, isn't it? To love without limits. What do I mean by that? Unconditional love. We can't say, well, I'll love you if you do this. That's not how Jesus loved, did he? Jesus didn't, or God didn't say, I'm going to send Jesus and I'm going to show my love for you when you guys clean up your act. That's how we need to love. Unconditionally. Now that doesn't mean we have to be crazy and let people burn us. Right? Or be take advantage of us. We have to be wise in that too. I'm not saying be crazy that way. Sometimes we have to be careful, but it can't be conditional. Unconditional love is what God showed for us, and love without limits. Love without expecting anything in return. I was looking at this past week, and Scripture talks about, why do you give something to somebody who you know can do something back for you? That's not really a gift, because you know they can give right back to you, right? Gift to somebody who can't give anything back to you. That's love. Give to somebody who you know there's no way on earth they could repay you back. There's huge joy in that. I think that's what uh, many of our folks are going to experience again when 22 people go to Honduras. We're going to give and do things that in many ways there's no way that it can be repaid back. But I'm going to tell you what, the blessings that come from stepping out and doing that are far more than anything you'd ever get back. Love without expecting anything in return. Love gives generously because it gets to, not because it has to. Don't give out a compulsion or, um, uh, I'm trying to think of the word I'm looking for, but guilt, thank you, guilt, give out of guilt. Um, Just give because you get to, right? Give generously. Love comes from the heart. Love is a feeling, right? Feeling that you have to do something. Love requires action. And isn't that what James says? Faith without works is dead. 
Love is an action, right? If you haven't read Bob Goff's book, Love Does, you need to read it. It's one of the best books I think I've ever read. Bob Goff just says, love does because love does. Love is because it does. When you love, you just simply do things. Isn't that what Jesus did at Christmas? We need to do the same thing. And then give the gift of joy. That's the third gift. Luke 2 says, And the angel said to them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy. That will be for all the people. How do you give the gift of joy? What does the gift of joy look like? Extend grace. Anybody in your life make mistakes? I see people going, yep. I'm not going to look at you and say, is he sitting next to you? Is she sitting next to you, right? But sometimes we need to just say, it's okay. I know you're not perfect. It's okay when our kids make a mistake. Sometimes we need to just say, I'm going to love you no matter what and extend some grace. Affirm them who they are. How do you give the gift of joy? Write a note. Give flowers. Take take care of a chore. Pick up a room. Make a favorite meal. You don't bring joy to my face. Make me a favorite meal. Right? Right? Now be careful with this one, but talk to strangers. How many of you have been told, don't talk to strangers? Don't talk to kids. I want parents to talk to your kids about this. So I'm not misunderstood, okay? But a stranger is so it's a stranger. We know nothing about strangers, right? Now there's a difference between stranger and creeper, too, okay? I mean, just work with me on this. Don't be a creeper. But What if we just start talking to strangers, people who we don't know? They're going to think we're weird or something, right? Try it. It's okay to be a little weird. But what if you just see people and you can just go up to them and start talking to them? I mean, that's been cool in the stores when I go shopping. It's like you're standing in line. Why not talk to the person behind you? Because we're all still waiting for that person with 40 40 items in the express lane. So let's get to meet them and complain together, right? I talked about that a few weeks ago. It's really cool. I got a text from somebody last week that said, I'm in that express lane. But talk to that person behind you. And it's amazing just the little conversations you can have or how they start telling you about their story. Sometimes we're like, oh boy, I didn't want to know that much. Right? But just to show up because who knows who's talked to them or who knows who's encouraged them. And then to say to them, I hope you have a Merry Christmas. And how many people in our world that's trying to be politically correct will say, happy holidays, and we say, have a Merry Christmas, and then they look at us and say, you have a Merry Christmas too. Yesterday afternoon, I said to Lisa, I, I don't have my steps in. <laughs> and I said, I need to take a walk. You want to go with me? She said, sure. So we took a walk around the block, and there were two boys walking these dogs, and I can't resist a couple of nice dogs, you know, I got to pet the dogs and stuff. So anyway, we're walking a little faster and we catch up to these boys and we're talking to them and how well they've trained their dogs. And and before you know it, we're standing at the end of our driveway. These are young boys, right? And uh, for a minute, I didn't know if the boys were walking the dogs or the dogs were walking the boys. But anyway, um, we get to the end and I say, hey, you guys have a Merry Christmas. And the one little boy turns around and goes, you have a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year too. And I thought, yes. Just a simple conversation which opens the door for the next time when he walks past the house. I had a little gift for the mailman, and I missed the mailman. So yesterday I went chasing him down in the neighborhood because I did see his truck go down the street. And he got there. He went past my house and delivered the mail. I walked in the house. He said, oh, man, the mailman was here. And Lisa goes, yeah, why? He said, I got something for him. He's the nicest guy in the world, our mailman. Right? If you don't know our mailman, you ought to move to our street because you get a great mailman. So I seen the truck go around the corner, and I was hoping maybe he wasn't at our house, but he was. So I went chasing him down, and he probably thought, who's this nut that's pulling in front of me, locking up the brakes, right? So I get out, and I walk back to his truck, and I had a little gift for him. It made his day. He just had the biggest smile on his face and said, thank you. So I said, no, thank you for what you do. Just bring a little joy by doing something maybe unexpected, Right? Talk to somebody you don't know. Meet somebody new. Engage people, right? One of the biggest ways I think that you can bring joy is just the smile. Right? Some people lighten up the room 
when they smile. Some people brighten the room when they leave. Right? Let's be those people. Did I really say that? You're smiling, right? You get it. All you got to do is smile. Christmas is a time when we should be smiling. If you haven't gone to the dentist, I know a great one. Let her brush your teeth and let her clean you up and put a big old smile on. We ought to have such big smiles that we can eat bananas sideways. Right? Nothing makes a person more joyful than somebody that walks in with a smile on their face. It's not that complicated. Joy to the world means smile. Back to my notes. Peace. Give the gift of peace. Okay? John 14, 27. Jesus says, I'm leaving you with a gift. This is one of the gifts of Christmas. Peace of mind and heart. And honestly, isn't that something that we can all use sometimes? How many times don't you stay awake at night thinking about stuff and let stuff bother you? You wake up and you can't get back to sleep. I think most of us do that. It says, the peace I give you is the gift the world cannot give. Don't look in the world for peace. Jesus says, I'm giving you a gift. Peace of mind and heart. Don't be troubled or afraid. Let me share these words from Jesus from the Beatitudes, too. I thought about this this week as I was preparing. It says, blessed are the peacemakers. Blessed are the peacemakers. Three little words. Four. Blessed are the peacemakers. From the Beatitudes. What that tells me is Jesus understood there's a lot of conflict in the world. Christmas isn't always an easy time because there's conflicts in our home, conflicts with families. It says, blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. There's blessings for those who bring peace. Maybe one of the gifts we need to give and practice at Christmas is to bring peace. How do you do that? Where's the conflict? Ask forgiveness or work towards forgiveness. Maybe you need to give forgiveness. Work on reconciliation and restoration. Isn't that the story of Christmas? Jesus came to reconcile us to God, right? Because there was separation. Our sin kept us apart. We needed to be reconciled. Christmas is really an act of reconciliation. How else do we give peace at Christmas? Help others understand that peace isn't in this world and the things of this world. We had a conversation with friends last night over dinner about this too. You can have all the stuff in the world, but if you don't have Christ, you have nothing. Because everything we have in this world, we're going to leave. Had that conversation this morning, standing out here fellowshipping. We can have all the money in the world and all the possessions in the world, but we're not taking any of, uh, any of it with us when we die. The only thing, the only source of our true happiness is when we have peace in our hearts and that comes from a relationship with Christ. And that's what God did by sending Jesus into the world. He sent God into the world, Emmanuel, God with us, so that people could have a relationship with him again and experience peace in their hearts. Help people understand that peace is different than happiness and not to confuse the two, but peace is found in a relationship with Christ. I could go on, but here's the point. Just as the wise, or just as the star led the wise men to Jesus, just as the star led the wise men to Jesus, you and I are to be stars, light in this world today, pointing others to Jesus today. I say that, and when I was preparing this this week, this text came to mind. And I think it pulls everything together. We've been following a star, and I've just called you to be a star. Listen to these words from the Apostle Paul in Philippians 2.14. He says, do everything. Two words. Do everything. What does that mean? It means do everything. Everything you do. Without grumbling or complaining or arguing, it says. Just unpack that for a minute. What does that really mean? Do everything without grumbling or complaining. 
That means every aspect of your life, 24-7, right? Seven days a week, 365, years, 365 days a year. Everything you do, do it without grumbling or complaining or arguing. I'd like to say, do everything with joy or happiness. If we're not grumbling or complaining, do everything willfully, thoughtfully, joyfully, happily. Isn't that, I mean, can you work with me? Can you agree with that? Everything you do, do it with a sense of joy. Do it with a sense of Christmas in your heart. And then he says, why? So that, so that you may become blameless and pure, children of God without fault in a warped and crooked generation. Then, and I love this, you will shine among them like stars in the sky. Listen to how Peterson, or not Peterson, but the New Living Translation paraphrases it. They say, do everything without complaining and arguing so that no one can criticize you. Live clean, innocent lives as children of God, shining like bright lights in a world full of crooked and per per perverse people. Wise men followed the star and appointed them to Christ at the first Christmas. You and I, Paul says, are to shine like that star. Old Testament, New Testament. We're to point them to Christ at Christmas. As you exchange your gifts, open your presence the next couple of days, I pray that you will all have a blessed and Merry Christmas. But more, much more than that, I hope and I pray more than what you get, you'll look at what you give. What is it that you're going to give away? And my prayer is that whether you're in that grocery line in the next 24 hours, or whether you're gathered around the tree, or whether you're gathered in a place for a family gathering, that you and I shine like stars. That we are joyfully, happily, cheerfully celebrating Christ. And that others see what we're celebrating. And that we share with them the gifts of hope and love and joy and peace. And that we point others to Christ, the light of the world at Christmas. Amen? You up to the challenge? Amen? Amen. Let's pray.